working okay? Yeah, I think, yeah, I can hear it, yeah. Um, all right, so, hi. My name is Susan, and I am one of Lama Jimpa's students. And I am here by his kindness and his blessings. Um, without his wisdom and compassion, you know, he's my constant light and my inspiration to stay on this path of the Buddha way. So um, this, oh good, you put it up, thank you, Dylan. Um, this um, image is was created, I think, by Patty and Lama together. Huh? He, he, he created it, but Patty inspired. Yeah, Patty made <laughs> <laughs> She made the flower. She's making that clear. Yeah. So this is this is um, a depiction of all of the different ways that we can provide service to the world, as it says. So, and I'm gonna talk about one particular petal here called chaplaincy um, uh, and um, not healing and recovery, although it may be part and parcel of that. Um, but I just, let's just leave that up for a few minutes um, while I get started on this talk. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a reading on bodhicitta. Um, a while back, Matthew Cruz mentioned something, um, kind of planted the seed when he mentioned that he wanted to start a, a program, actually next Sunday's program, with a short talk on bodhicitta. And I thought, you know, that's right. That's really true. Every talk, every program should talk, should start with some sort of an homage to bodhicitta. And frankly, I mean, I can't really remember a talk or a darshan from Lama or a darshan I've had with him where bodhicitta and the bodhisattva activities hasn't been part and parcel of our discussion and of the inspiration. And if you notice, at the very bottom of this petal of all of the dharma involved in lion's war activities, at the bottom is bodhicitta, the stem is bodhicitta. So given that, I'm gonna do a little, just, just, just a paragraph or so from this book that I've been studying by a teacher named a uh, woman, Anne Klein. Um, she, Lama Rigson Droma, and this is um, a book I've been reading on Long Chempa's Feminine Fold Mind Training. So this is something I think that she translated from her teacher and this is what her teacher said in her translation. Why is bodhicitta so important? It brings our minds vastness as well as courage. So I thought that was really important. It opens us up, it makes it big, and it makes us courageous. With such a mind, we can overcome our powerful habit of sustaining a pervasive sense, a pervasive sense of meanness of holding on to self. This erroneous holding is the taproot for all our afflictions and pain. Bodhicitta banishes them. Bodhicitta is necessary at all times, regardless of our activity. Bodhicitta destabilizes the very ground of our grasping at me. When that grasping dissolves, our heart easily embraces all living beings. Let our every action be motivated by the intention to benefit everyone. Indeed, the aim of all our practice, of all our training, is the flourishing of our bodhicitta, our awakened mind. So, and the name of the book, by the way, is Being Human and a Buddha too, so it's a little catchy, right? Um, and, you know, I wanted to, preface this talk, this talk is about a program that we're introducing um, from a um, statement that's on our webpage. And um, this is what's stated. It says, Lions Road Dharma Center and Dhanadagi Temple follow the Buddha Dharma, a new humanism that embraces both the secular and sacred paths of transformation. We recognize and affirm the inherent and indestructible goodness of all beings. 
So this new program is offered in that spirit, whether you're on a secular path or a spiritual sacred path, this is open to everybody and important for all of us. So uh, Lama's calling this the Delic program. Um, my explanation of that word is this Lion's War Roars Goodwill and Service program. So um, around the end of 2022, which was like, like ages ago, right? I mean, it just, <laughs> ah, um, I gave a talk on my experience um, doing chaplaincy work. And I expressed an aspiration for having a program in Lion's Roar that has to do with helping others um, through either service to um, Lion's Roar, service to our community, um, service in, in anything that, that we are capable of doing and make it an actual Lion's Roar activity like that pedal there. Um, and maybe, you know, people who are interested in the program and maybe, you know, do some training in the program might get the aspiration to do some training in chaplaincy. And then when Jaro Rinpoche is here next, um, we're not sure when that's going to be, but we're hoping it's sometime within the next year or so, um, he uh, can again go through an ordination ceremony and do some uh, ordain some new chaplains. And so that would be pretty cool. Um, we started with the basics here many, many years ago. Doug Kleinsmith and I have been giving a, um, leading a medicine Buddha practice on the first Friday of the month um, in the evenings. And we've been doing that for years and years and years. And so that's kind of the basis of um, the DELEC program. And the other thing that we started um, sometime, I think in 22 or early 23, was that book that we have in the back called the Prayers and Practices book. And it is a book for entering the names um, of people both um, alive and not alive and pets who are in need of um, prayers in order to benefit their well-being to further their healing. Um, so that, that prayers and practices book is, is available for anybody to put anybody's name in. And then the people who do medicine Buddha practice or come in and do Tara practice here um, include those names in their prayers. Um, towards the beginning of 2023, Lama introduced the idea of this Delic program, which it comes from a greeting, uh, Tibetan greeting, Tashe Dele, which Connor tells me means something like good tidings. Yeah, so you just say, but it's, you just say that whenever you meet anybody um, who speaks Tibetan is Tashe Dele. D-E-L-E-K is the Dele. And that's also the DELIC program. So it's something like a program of goodwill ambassadors. So this is going to be some formal and semi-formal training um, to people who wish to acquire skills and participate in activities that help others. And to, in the process, enhance this ambiance of bodhicitta, both personally within each one of us individually, but also collectively um, in Lion's War as a whole so that we can spread that out to the community. So it's a training in bodhicitta. I guess everything's a training in bodhicitta. So, after he introduced the program or early last year, he encouraged uh, and supported a couple of introductory meetings that we had. We had one in June and another one in September. Um, and in October of last year, we were very fortunate to have a longtime friend, um, Geshe Gendon, uh, come and offer a workshop on chaplaincy. Um, Geshe Gendon has been a Buddhist chaplain um, in hospitals for many, many years, uh, mostly working um, in Boston. And so the the workshop was really very wonderful. Um, but after he left, 
I kind of got real inactive. Um, I guess, like, let's see, the holidays happened and da 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 da, you know, right? So, not really much has happened on this program since the workshop in October. Fortunately, Lama, in his wisdom, has been, you know, nudging me along, right? And encouraging me to step up and get something going on this. And so, that's what this is about is sort of getting going on this goodwill and service program, the DELEC program. So as I said, the program is open to everyone, regardless of what path you're on. Um, you do not need to be on a sacred path of, um, you know, the, the becoming awakened and becoming a full-fledged, you know, Buddhist. Um, this is for people who want to help. And Geshe Gendon in his workshop, he started the workshop talking about something called the paramitas, which um, are often translated as the perfections. And our program, at least at the beginning, is going to focus on the same things. The paramitas um, are activities, guiding principles, that encourage transformation. And in Buddhist terms, they take us to the other shore. They take us from suffering to freedom, from samsara to nirvana, right, right now in this lifetime. Um, the Mahayana tradition generally talks about six perfections, and those are generosity, ethical discipline, patience, enthusiastic effort, meditation, and wisdom. Um, there are actually 10 perfections. People who practice Kala Chakra know this. Um, there are 10 perfections, and the others are aspiration. Um, a word, I think, is bala uh, in Sanskrit that is frequently translated something like confidence or power or strength. Um, so there's aspiration. Um, Power, skillful means, upaya, and then another kind of wisdom, a special, stable wisdom. So, um, you know, we all learn as we're growing and continue through our lives how to get along with people, how to handle situations. We learn from our parents. We learn from our teachers, from our friends, from social media, from society as a whole. And frankly, I don't know about you, but it can be kind of contradictory. It can be a little confusing and it can be kind of unclear. You can hear one thing from your dad and really quite something else from, um, you know, your girlfriend or, you know, your sister, your brother. So it can be kind of confusing, but in Buddhism, the guiding principles for human relations are these parameters. And studying them and practicing them in everyday life really can help untangle the contradictions and the confusions and really provide some clarity about what to do when, uh, um, how to get along with others. And thus, how to help others, as well as how to help ourselves. So the parameters are very, very key in everything that we do. So we are suggesting, at least for a while, that this program be structured around a couple of books. Uh, one book that Lama suggested was Shanti Deva's Guide to the Bodhisattva Way of Life. Um, there's quite a number of really good translations and excellent commentaries out there. Um, but the one that we're going to focus on, although you're free to read whatever you want, is um, this one by Pema Children called No Time to Lose. Um, the thing about Pem Pema Children, for many of you, I'm sure, have read one of her many books, is she's so down to earth and she just really, really brings it down into your everyday life. So Shanti Deva can be a little esoteric. She makes it very, very practical. So that we're going to start on this. Um, and you know, you don't have to read it if you don't want to. You 
that, that doesn't mean that you can't be part of the program if you're not reading um, Shatri Deva. But let me tell you a little bit about the text and this particular commentary. Basically, each one of the chapters really talks about a particular paramita. Um, every, of Shanti Deva goes through the paramitas. That's that's basically what the Bodhisattva way of life is about. Um, generosity does not have its own ch chapter because generosity is really considered the underpinning of all of the other paramitas. And actually, one of our meetings, I think the one in September, we um, talked about generosity. And um, Skillful means also does not have its own chapter, but skillful means is activated through the other parameters. There's the skillful means, for instance, of patience, right? Um, skillful means of effort, skillful means of um, meditation, shamatha meditation. So, Papa Children's first chapter is called Developing a Clear Intention. And it offers, as she says, a rhapsody on the wonders of bodhicitta. Chapter two, she calls preparing the ground. And it prepares the mind to nurture bodhicitta. And the third chapter is transcending hesitation. So that introduces us to the bodhisattva vow, the commitment to use one's life to help others. So these three chapters of developing a clear intention, preparing the ground, and transcending the hesitation sound to me a lot like the parameters of aspiration and of bala, of confidence, power, strength, right? That's what he's doing. He's building this up and he's creating enthusiasm and um, just the, the this confidence and the enthusiasm to want to move forward with bodhicitta. So the next three or four chapters describe how to work skillfully with emotional reactivity through being very careful and very attentive to what it is we do, what's going on, what's happening around us, and reflecting on how we react to that. So two chapters address ethical discipline, and it's not so much in terms of the outer discipline of speech and um, activities, but is more from the inner discipline of taming our mind. And in order to tame our mind, we can transform the other two disciplines of our activity and our speech. So there's a lot of time being spent on mind training. Um, the commentary dedicates two chapters to Shanti Deva's most famous chapter, which is chapter six, and it's the chapter on patience big, big, big thing. Um, it's considered the armor, right? Um, the most effective way of working with our anger, painful emotions, painful situations. Patience is, is a huge training and she spends a lot of time on it as does the Shati Deva. And then the final chapters are dedicated to enthusiastic effort, which she calls heroic perseverance. And that's the idea of the Bodhisattva warrior, right? Just, you know, that, that really desire to, to help others and to help ourselves and to better the world. Um, and the final two chapters are on the perfection of meditation. There is not a chapter on wisdom. Wisdom, of course, is all the way through it. Um, but the wisdom chapter in, in, in the Bodhicharya Vitara is really complicated and um, we're not going to go there. Um, so anyway, so that's a little bit about Shantideva and about um, the book No Time to Lose, one of the commentaries on that. Is anybody familiar with Shantideva? Is anybody familiar with the Bodhisattva way of life? I'm seeing a lot of nodding. Okay. Um, are there questions about the parameters or um, comments you want to make about the parameters before I go on? Mm -hmm. 
No, okay. All right. Um, the other text that Lama suggests is a book by Ram Das, um, who probably needs no introduction. And um, Paul Gorman, who is, I tried to find out as much as I could about him. Um, he is um, a very, uh, very much into Dharma, or was, I'm pretty sure, uh, like Ram Das, he, is, he has passed away. Um, but it's a book that they wrote back way long ago, 1985, which is quite a while ago. Anyway, it's a book called How Can I Help? I've seen Sue's got it. I saw it on her on her uh, bookshelf. And I think others of you probably have this as well. Um, as stories and reflections on service. So um, the book is profound. It is thought provoking. It can be changing. Um, the chapters cover really big topics like selflessness, compassion, suffering, the challenges of social activism, burnout. So they cover very big topics, but it's full of stories that are related by people from all walks of life. It's people that are in medicine, people who are administrators of social services, um, chaplains, priests, mothers, fathers, sick people, little kids, all sorts of people who are getting help and all sorts of people who are giving help. And so it's just full of stories. Um, I'm going to read it. Uh, um, this is at the end of the book. And so it's kind of a, a summary of think of what it's trying to, to help us with. So this is what Ram Dass says. Service not only reveals a larger vision of life, but steadily moves us along and supports us in our efforts to realize this vision. Each time we seek to respond to appeals for help, we are being shown where we must grow in our sense of unity and what inner resources we can call upon to do so. So this is a book about growth. We are constantly given, for example, the chance to experience the inherent generosity of our heart. Each time this happens, our faith in that part of ourselves which is intimately related to the rest of the universe is strengthened. So too, approaching each act of caring with a desire to grow, we also meet our fears and resistances, but with the opportunity to see them for what they are and in so doing, to loosen their hold and ultimately to relinquish them. On the path of service then, we are constantly given feedback, which helps us along the greater journey to awakening. So this book is background, inspiration, great food for contemplation and meditation. Um, so I, I mean, just, I highly recommend it. It is really, really an inspiring book. Anyway, that's a little bit about the books that we're suggesting. Um, so here's kind of an outline of the program. First of all, this is not a class. If it was a class, as most of you know, it would be a lot easier for me. Um, you know, facilitating classes is really kind of my thing. I've been doing classes here for what, maybe eight, nine years, but I'm not doing that anymore. So Lama has me on a new path, and that is this one, which is much more open-ended. Um, so there's not going to be any assigned readings per se. Um, I'd like us, and Lama would like us, to meet maybe once a month. I'm hoping to kind of append that to or precede that to the Sangha meetings that he has um, on some Saturdays. So that he has these one o'clock meetings for community meetings, Sangha meetings. And we were thinking maybe to have a lunch meeting from like 11.30 to quarter to one, where we would just gather and eat and talk about um, one of the paramitas. So 
the, the advantage of doing that, appending it to one of the Sangha meetings is that there's a greater chance that Lama would be able to join us. So that I think would be really important. Um, one of the parameters is will be the focus um, of the meeting. Um, and not so much, again, in terms of, of a teaching situation, except if Lama's there, of course, we're always, you know, going to be have the benefit of, of his teaching. Um, but everybody is going to be invited to share something about that paramita. For example, let's take, talk about patience. Um, how did patience over the last month of time that you've been practicing patience, really studying it and practicing and thinking about patience. How has that changed your ability to work with a friend who is struggling? How has it changed or has it changed your ability to work with a grouchy coworker or a grouchy neighbor? Um, how has your understanding of patients shared, not shared, but changed as a result of the readings of reading Shanti Deva and Pema Chodron's commentary or another commentary of reading How Can I Help? How has your idea of patients changed? Um, alternatively, how has patients gone out the window when you needed it, but you got overwhelmed by frustration, irritation? I mean, that happens, yeah? So, you know, we blow it. And that's, that's, that's part of the reason for the group. It's part of the reason for the meeting is that we learn from each other and that we come together to support each other and encourage each other. Um, we'll be a group of interdependent helpers, service providers, volunteers. You know, we're moms and we help our kids. We're teachers and we help um, those kids. Or we are coworkers and we help our bosses and we help our coworkers. We're neighbors, we're family members, right? All of this starts there. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going out to a hospital or you're going to a long-term care facility or you're going to Volunteers of America or the Sacramento Food Bank. It happens every minute of your life, of being a helper. Um, what was it? There was something I just noticed that I was going to bring up, but, but it's gone. Oh, well. Um, but there's lots and lots of, of opportunities to see yourself as a helper in the world. So um, I'm... In addition to these monthly meetings, I'm hoping to be able to get something going with Geshe Gendan. He is currently in India at Sarajay and didn't sound like he was planning on coming back anytime soon. But he did offer to try to set something up online. So I'm going to be working with him to see what we can set up online to get the benefit of his experience and his teachings. Um, I've also been in contact with Tenzin Choki, who has offered a number of programs here. And um, she has a program that she has developed on service work. And so we're talking about getting um, her up here, yay, again, for another workshop. Yeah, everybody's nodding. I mean, she's fabulous, right? Um, I've also got conversations going with other people I know in the community um, who are chaplains, um, who um, climate involved in climate activism, um, who work with um, immigrants. So, um, and then in our own community, we've got a number of people who are very, very heavily involved in service providing, um, who work with non nonprofits, um, and whose lives are dedicated, and we can hear from them and learn from them. So we can all learn from each other. We got it all right here. Um, there's lots of opportunities to make this a really enriching and vital program. Um, but ultimately, you know, whether or not the program takes off and becomes something vibrant, sort of like this pedal here, um, is going to be up to us. Um, 
you know, up to whatever it is that, that we make of it. And it isn't going to like happen overnight. This is going to develop, you know, it's going to, it's going to be pretty organic. Um, so I'm really kind of looking forward to it. This is a new endeavor for me. And um, Lama is, um, actually, I heard from him this morning, um, giving support and encouragement. What he said is, Lion's Roar is all about service. And so, I mean, he's really, really wants us to consider being a group of delics, a group of goodwill and service providers. So with that, um, if, yeah, you could take the video thing down so I can see who's online. And with that, that's, that's all I got. But what I want to do is hear from you. What are your ideas? What are your um, comments, suggestions? Is this a good idea? Is this sort of a weird idea? What is this? What do you think? I think it's a great idea. That's a great talk. Thanks, Susan. Okay. So and I saw Andrew and anybody else. Let me hear from you. Well, I'll go on record and say I think it's a great idea, and I think you're just the right person to be <laughs> doing it. <laughs> um, you know, as someone who's given a lot um, professionally, personally, um, I just want to kind of be mindful of um, compassion fatigue and burnout. Um, and that that can some like the idea of extending oneself beyond what they're already doing. I think maybe it's the self clinging or something where some of some of us might be thinking, well, taking on more. Are you kidding me? Or what would happen if I do this and I can't handle it? So I guess my question is, what thought has been given to the support with the delics? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do see what you're saying. Um... The idea of behind the meetings is to be support. The idea of coming, showing up at Lions Roar community um, for meditations, for Sunday talks, for you know whatever kinds of programs. I mean, community is support, right? We're all support all the time. Um, I'm available. Lama's available. Um, where you know the idea is to form a community, right? And um, I think that maybe burnout could be something that can be addressed specifically anytime that that we get together, so that we are very careful. Again, one of the chapters is about being careful and attentive. What's going on, and what's my response? And if I'm feeling burned out, then guess what? I need to talk to somebody. I need to back off a little bit. I need to be helpful and generous and patient and kind to myself. So, yeah, it'll be, yeah. I mean, I think everybody's pretty well aware that that's a danger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a follow-up question, I'm totally unrelated. <laughs> So follow up question totally unrelated while well, I have the mic. Uh, the uh, the graphic that we have here, I don't know if I noticed before the um, water underneath. Is that symbolizing like going to the other shore? What's the symbol well, for that? It's, it's a lotus, right? And it's lotuses come out of the mud, they come out of the water, and the stem is bodhicitta. And so those roots are going to be down here, right? So it's a lotus. It's just the, that 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 depiction. It doesn't look like maybe the lotuses that are on the the tonkas, but yeah, that's what it is. It's a lotus. Yeah. Thank you so much, Susan, for your talk. And yes, you're the perfect person. And I think it's a great idea. And I do want to make the comment that I think we already have um, a basis for this because I just saw our sangha come out of the woodwork when I needed help. 
and it was just amazing and touching and it's here. So I think for you to put it together, help us put it together and formalize it because uh, it's amazing the amount of help that's that's offered through this Sangha already. So I wanna say special thank you. Yeah, that. good, yeah. you're welcome. Anything else? Okay. Well, just something. This is really quick. I just noticed the at the bottom between the water and the bodhicitta is alive to the world. Is what? This is alive to the world. Yeah. Like, what, what does that yeah. mean? I think I have an idea, but huh? what do you think that means? That we are aware. We're open. We're aware. There's a, um, uh, I, that's what it meant to me. So, you know, I'm going to ask you what it means to you too. Okay. There we go. Um, there's a, um, a, par a paradigm, I guess, um, in Zen um, from a teacher called Bernie Glassman. And the paradigm has three parts. The first is don't know mind, which means you're open, you're empty, you're you know preconceived notions. Hard to do, really hard to do, right? But don't know mind. And the second step is bearing witness, watching, listening, seeing what's going on, being open and receptive. And the third is an appropriate action. And that to me is alive to the world being open and receptive and then having an appropriate response, being an appropriate helper, knowing what to do. That's what it means to me anyway. What does it mean to you? You're not just you're not just uh, spending all your time in your own, your own room meditating, <laughs> but you're bringing it out into the world and you're looking around. And uh, meditation also makes you more aware of what's going on, too. And uh, things come in that you might not have noticed before. Thank you. <laughs> hmm? Oh, don't know mind. Bearing witness. And an appropriate response. And Daniel, yeah. It sounds to me like the Delic program is primarily about trying to help us become better helpers. Is there, is it sort of general, just like, as you sort of mentioned, ah, better, better, whatever, at helping our family, better at helping our community, better at just being helpful, or is there like a, a specific direction ultimately, like will the Delics be aimed at specific activities or goals in the in the long run, right? Maybe in the beginning they're just sort of being grown into better helpers, but then at some point directed towards specific projects or activities like chaplaincy. Mm, I, yeah, but I wonder if that wouldn't be individual, right? Um, let's say, um, I mean, there, there's a lot of different opportunities for, I mean, I mean, it could be a career, it could be um, volunteer work, but different people have different interests. Um, and for me, for instance, you know, um, I'm I've got certain skills and abilities, and so I'm going to go towards those skills and abilities unless Lama pushes me to get out of my comfort zone, which he, is what he does, right? But um, I think I don't, I don't have a thing in mind for lion's roar, per se, although something could develop. Somebody could come up with a great idea and we'll do it, right? Like maybe, I don't know, I don't know what. Um, or it could just be an individual thing. You know, oh, wow, I never thought about that, but I'm really good at da-da-da. And so maybe 
Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll dip my toe in that water. Is that, yeah, okay, all right. So yeah, I don't know, we'll see, yeah. So thank, thank you for the talk. Uh, I know it's, you know, it seems easy when you're really well versed in something to, to give a great talk, but I know that that means that there was lots and lots of preparation in there. So thank you for putting this together for us. And I guess this is a spinoff of Daniel's question. I just, it seems to me that when you're talking and, and I was thinking this, I had the same exact question that Daniel had, but it seems like you're saying no matter what, get involved if you can, because it seems like if you start in the smallest concentric circle with just yourself and everyone's life that you normally touch, if you're thinking in this way and being practicing in the paramitas, you're going to have a uh, much better touch and much better way about you in the world and what you normally do. And then from there, maybe you could take a leap to a bigger concentric circle, but it sounds like to me that the invitation is come because what you're already normally doing could be enhanced. And then maybe you'll find little areas where you could branch out and maybe I mishear you, but it sounds to me like you're saying it's an all call all welcome, all try, all support each other, because no matter where, whatever you're doing in your normal everyday life, your touch will be better if you're coming from this perspective of practicing the paramitas. Thank you, Sharla. Is yeah. that accurate? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah. it's an all call. All call. Yeah. <laughs> so, and yeah, I mean, it's true that, that these, these paramitas, if you haven't specifically studied what the dickens is patience right what is ethical discipline what is generosity i mean then then it gets bigger and what was in that that thing that's vast and um so yeah 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 thank you yeah questions in the government everyone's been very quiet today I don't see anybody online. I don't see anyone. I don't know. I haven't got a visual of the online. It doesn't look like anyone's uh, okay. open up for questions. So. Okay, so maybe we're done, which is right. It's noon. Okay. So with that, we will do closing prayers. And um, if you want to take a look at these two books, please do. I've got some copies up here. Okay, dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain a state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, May that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezi, Tenzin Jatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losung, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, Merce will give over a stream of profound and vast instructions to fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Rosandrapa, I make a request at your holy feet. Um, do we have any announcements? Announcements? I just have a question, and uh, I don't know if this is possible or has been done, but uh, some of us I know are going to the retreat next weekend, and I wonder, do people carpool or do you just drive your own vehicles? I'm happy to do whatever people do, but just curious if 
I'm going up and back. I'm curious if people want to meet at the. That's a that's a really good suggestion. Yeah, um, parking. There's there's fair amount of parking up there, but not a there lot. There is because I just don't so, want to. So hmm? I was just thinking it might be you know, oh, sir on yeah. Ellen's land if we Smart bring carpool, less yeah, vehicles. Definitely. So yeah, if y'all want to get together and figure out carpooling, that's a good idea. But you have to sort of like, you know, just ask around. But okay. yeah, that's a good idea. And then Andrew had something back there. Hi, just a friendly reminder that Dharma Dudes is happening after service today. So if you're a dude and you want to come hang out. Oh, please. and then next Sunday, speaking of the retreat, um, not everybody's going to be at Lotus View Ranch on Sunday. So there will be a um, sit, actually. Matthew and I are going to just have a, a maybe a couple of short sits and a walk and maybe a little talk and um but just a gathering here but it won't be like the formal sunday service thing it's going to be more like a um in partnership with the people at lotus view so we'll probably just do a little kind of mini retreat huh um yeah probably need to be yeah yeah yeah, good point. I don't know. Matthew can probably do it though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for thinking of that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there'll be stuff here next Sunday. Matthew and I'll be here anyway. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Ellen, you had your hand up. Yeah, just to respond to Shar's question, I could send an email around uh, to those people that look like they're driving back and forth to the retreat so that you know who each other are and then it will help you self-organize those uh, carpools. Yeah, great idea, thank you. So I'll do that, I'll try to send an email to all the people that look like they're driving back and forth one day or both days. That would be fabulous, thank you, Ellen. Yeah, there's plenty of parking, but the drive's pretty arduous. So if you can double up, it's kind of nice. Double I up just, or triple up. Yeah. Just noted that part of the email where it's like, if you've not been here before, it's hard to find those gates. And I'm thinking, I have not been here before. I might need to go with better eyes than mine. <laughs> okay. okay. Any other, Patty, you got anything? So um, there's a, a sign up sheet. I think it's Bill, Bill, can you put a thumbs up? Sonia, this is mine. This is mine. Contact you later. She don't show in and Lama Lama. Um, where's the sign up sheet? Um, I was just asking Bill. We'll we'll bring it over uh, to the entrance. But um, if anybody online is interested, I don't. I can't see who you are. You can email us at info at Is that right? Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Guess that's it. All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, there is like a billion pieces of plastic containers in the kitchen. If they are yours, please take them home. I mean, there's like a ton of them in there. Um, and there's also some coats hanging in the back that have been there for weeks and weeks and weeks. If you left your coat here, please take it home. So, okay. Uh, but, Ellen, Ellen had a question. Um, can you repeat what the sign up sheet is for? Oh, the sign up sheet is um, for the 14th of next month. There is an entering the path and a refuge ceremony. So if you're interested in finding out more information, uh, you put your name on the, the sign-up sheet. Or email info at lionsordharmacenter.org. Okay, is that it? All right, thanks, y'all. Happy thanks, day. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Susan. Great talk. Thank you. Om Ara
ਰਾਇ ਪਾਤਾ ਨਾਮ ਦੇ ਓਮ